Hello everyone, my name is Yi and I'm a tour guide for SO Tours. If you don't know what SO Tours is, we are the first all-female motorbike tour in Vietnam offering the most acclaimed city tours and foodie tours in Saigon. So, for more details, please visit our website sotours.vn. Many people that come to Saigon confused about where to stay in because Saigon is actually much larger than you think. There are 24 districts in total and most people that come to Saigon usually stay in District 1 because it's where that most of you know, hotels and the main tourist attractions are nearby. There is a popular saying, Ăn quận 5, nằm quận 3, xa 2 quận 1, chuẩn lộ quận 4 which means eat in D5, sleep in D3, party in D1 and get drunk in D4. So in this video, I will introduce you to four other districts and the reason why you should stay there. Next are in District 1, the city center. There are many advantages to stay in District 1 compared to the other districts. That's the reason why most travelers choose to stay here. First of all, District 1 has the most choices for accommodation in the city, from the cheapest hostels to 5-star hotels. In addition, most of the main tourist attractions are located here, like the Notre Dame Cathedral, Central Post Office, War Remnant Museum, and Independence Palace. District 1 is also a great area for people that love nightlife, with a wide range of bars, clubs, and cafes that are open until late into the evening. Keep in mind, however, that food, accommodations, and other services in District 1 are often much more expensive in comparison to the other districts. If you're the type of traveler that would prefer to stay in a less touristy area, we would recommend avoiding District 1. For a nearby option, let's head over to District 3. According to the old saying I mentioned earlier, District 3 is the best place to get good night's sleep. That is why some of the oldest neighborhoods in Saigon are located in District 3. District 3 is much less busy than District 1, but it is still conveniently located to most of the main tourist attractions and shopping areas. Many of the oldest French colonial buildings in the city are also located in District 3, so it's a great place to stay if you love architecture. District 3 also has some of the most unique coffee shops in Saigon, where many Saigonese will gather for leisure and work. There isn't as much nightlife in District 3 as in District 1. However, you can find some of the best live music in District 3 at places like the Acoustic Bar and Yoko Bar. From District 3, we're going to now cross the Saigon River to visit District 4. District 4, like District 3, borders District 1, so it is conveniently located to most of the popular sites in the city. There are not as many hotel options in D4 compared to D1 and 3, but you will find some amazing Airbnbs with some of the best views in the city in D4. D4 used to have a reputation for being ground ridden but over the past 10 years, the government has cleaned up the crime and D4 is now one of the best locations in Saigon to find amazing street seafood. Crab claws, scallops and clams are some of the highlights. The only downside to the restaurants in this area is that most do not have English menus. If you feel intimidated about exploring D4 on your own, join ESO Tours on our famous foodie tour and we will order the best seafood in D4 for you. The next district we're going to check out is District 5, which is often referred to as Chinatown. Welcome to one of the largest Chinatowns in the world. Locals call the Chinatown here Jia Lun, which literally means big market. The name says it all. It's the main trading and wholesale district in Saigon. Most of the vendors in Bentan Market and other popular markets in Saigon come here to buy their products wholesale, so the prices in this district are usually much lower than in the touristy areas. Keep in mind, however, that many vendors in Chinatown only sell their products in Bong, 
It's also more difficult to shop in Chinatown if you do not speak Vietnamese or Cantonese because most of the vendors here don't speak English. Another disadvantage of staying in District 5 is that it's quite far away the main tourist attractions. If you love Chinese architecture, bargain buys, outdoor markets, and street food, however, this is the best district in Saigon to stay in. Also, if you're the type of traveler that loves to get off the beaten path, then you will appreciate the fact that you won't run into many tourists in District 5. And now, we're going to head to District 2 for a complete change in scenery. District 2 used to be swampland, but major development in recent years has transformed it into the richest district in the city, filled with mansions and villas. If you're tired of eating Vietnamese food and you're interested in fine dining, you will love District 2. You'll find some of the most acclaimed European and Western restaurants in the city in D2. This district is also one of the most popular areas for expats to live in because it is much less hectic than the other districts and has less air pollution. Many of the largest international schools are located in D2, so it's a convenient place to live for many expats that teach for a living. The downside to D2 is that it takes around 30 minutes to travel to the city center and there are much less local street food options. And during the rainy season, from June to October, many areas in D2 are prone to flooding. We hope you found this video about the districts in Saigon helpful. For most first-time travelers to Saigon, we would still recommend staying in District 1 since it is the most convenient area for sightseeing and shopping. If you've been to Saigon before and want to explore some other unique districts, however, we don't think you can go wrong with one of the other districts we mentioned in this video. If you like this video and want to see more travel videos from ESO Tours, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.